So those of you out there that have pretty good basic math skills should be able to do this problem without a calculator. And hopefully that's most of you. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem here. We have parentheses 90 minus 100 cubed divided by parentheses 100 minus 90 squared. Okay, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer uh, into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer in just one second. And then of course, I'll walk through the solution uh, step by step. This is not that difficult. And matter of fact, it is just downright easy to do without a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just like it, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is negative 10. Okay, so if you got this right, that is very good. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert when it comes to the area of doing basic mathematics without a calculator. They'll be like, wow, that is... Uh, you know, very nice. Uh, do you have any hobbies or do you just do math all day long? And you can respond to them. Well, you know what? I'm good at math because I watched that guy on YouTube. All right. Well, all jokes aside, if you did this right, good job. And if you didn't, uh, you know, understand or if you got a different uh, answer, don't panic. This is not that difficult. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay. So the first thing we need to discuss real quick is something called the order of operations. This is a huge thing in mathematics. And uh, if I would have to say uh, for uh, math students or people who do a math problem and they get a problem wrong, okay? In other words, people who have trouble or difficulty in mathematics, it would break down in this way. I'm gonna give you my top three reasons that people struggle in basic mathematics, okay? The first is the order of operations. We'll just put this down as PEMDAS. I'll explain this here in a second. So this is the first reason, okay, super common mistakes. The next is positive and negative numbers. A lot of people just confuse these uh, basic rules. And by the way, these things that people uh, make the most mistakes in are easy to correct. Okay, so it's kind of crazy. You know, we're not talking about advanced math here. So order of operations, positive, negative numbers, and fractions. People just don't like fractions. When you show people fractions, generally they're just like this. Fractions, why do I have to do fractions? You know, listen, fractions are everywhere in mathematics. But if you can uh, really master these three uh, math skills, okay, you will be an expert, okay, in mathematics. Uh, because a lot of people, again, who struggle uh, in basic math, it's because of these three reasons, okay? All right, so and that's just a little side tip for those of you that want to improve in basic mathematics. So let's go ahead and just focus uh, in here on the order of operations. Okay, so in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, and the like, these are called mathematical operators, and these are mathematical operations, and we have to do problems in the correct order, okay? The correct uh, mathematical order, if not, if we take this order versus this order versus this order, in other words, we can do subtraction first, division first, you know, we can do all kinds of creative things here. We'll end up with different values. Only one is the correct way, okay? So in order to know whether you're uh, using the correct order of operations, you got to keep this lovely saying in mind, PEMDAS, okay? This is, again, an acronym, P-E-M-D-A-S. I'll explain very quickly here what it means in a second. But there's a lovely little memory aid that goes along with this, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. And by the way, this phrase has been around forever, for decades and decades and decades. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So what does it stand for? Well, it's a checklist that goes from left to right, left to right. So P stands for parentheses. So if you see parentheses, which of course we have some in our problem, this is where we need to start, okay? But these uh, parentheses could also be grouping symbols like brackets or these little squiggly things like this. Uh, basically, 
uh, we're talking about grouping symbols. Now, I'm going to give you an abbreviated explanation of PEMDAS. There's more uh, um, that you need to know and practice. So if you're interested in really you know, practicing ba basic mathematics more beyond this video, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. Plus, I have an excellent uh, little mini kind of basic math boot camp. It's called my Math Foundations course. You'll find a link to it in the description that can help you out big time with basic math. Okay, so E stands for exponents. Uh, basically, you can think of it as powers. Okay, so when you have a power, here, let me just kind of write this real quick, like two to the third power, this is how we would say this, right? The two part of this power is called the base. This little three up here is called the exponent. So when you're dealing with the power, the little number in the top right is called the exponent. So this is what this means. So we're gonna do parentheses first. Then if we have any powers, we're gonna do those next, of course, we're going to have some powers in this problem. Okay, so this M, D, A, and S, M stands for multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. And this is where a lot of students get confused uh, and understandably so, because you think if it's a checklist from left to right that you're going to do multiplication, always, 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 and then division next. After all the multiplication, that's not the case. That's not the way this works, okay? This is an actu actually a group. So you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right, okay? So if you see multiplication and then division, you're gonna do it this way, but if you see division first from left to right, you're gonna do it this way. Addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so now that you are an expert in the order of operations, we have to keep this in mind because we have various operations here, right? We have parentheses, we have powers, we have division, we have subtraction. So we have to always keep PEMDAS in mind. All right, so obviously, uh, we're going to be thinking about wanting to do these parentheses first. And uh, you might be saying, all right, let me go ahead and work with these parentheses. But before we do this, okay, before we even start the order of operations per se, what I'm going to suggest to you is that let's write this problem in an entirely different way and a much better way to actually do this problem without a calculator, okay? So what I want you to notice here is that we have this whole thing here, and it's being divided by this whole thing here. Anytime you have one thing being divided by another thing, this thing right here being divided by this thing, you can think of this as a fraction. Now, I know a lot of you are like, oh, fractions. Come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't give me fractions. Well, fractions are going to make our uh, life a lot easier here. Okay, So this is going to be the numerator, and this will be the denominator. We're taking this, and we're dividing it by this. So when you have a fraction, you could take, let's say I had this expression right here, this right here, this fraction uh, means 90, uh, parentheses 90 minus 100 cubed being divided by this. Okay, now there's a real um, advantage to uh, doing the problem this way. And of course, I'll show you that in just one second. But uh, first, let's go ahead and make sure you understand uh, how to simplify what's inside these parentheses now, okay? And of course, I'll show you why this is a much better way to approach this problem. All right, so here we have parentheses 90 minus 100 uh, parentheses cubed over 100 minus 90 parentheses squared. So as I indicated, uh, that one of the uh, biggest reasons why students make mistakes in mathematics is they uh, mess up positive and negative number operations. Okay, real basic stuff. So 90 minus 100, we have to do what's inside parentheses now. And another kind of thing about the order of operations, when you have a fraction, you can kind of think of the numerator and the denominator as kind of independent little problems. In other words, uh, when you're doing an order of operation problems that involves a, a fraction like this, just focus on the numerator as its own separate problem, the denominator as its own separate problem. And when you're done doing uh, simplifying, uh, the respective uh, you know, numerators and denominator here, then you could put those uh, values together to simplify the problem. Okay, so it just makes things a lot easier uh, when you're focusing here. So here, 90 minus 100, this right here, when we do this inside parentheses, this is negative 10, okay, negative 10, not 10. Okay, so if we put that down as 10, well, then you need to do some review with your positive and negative numbers. It's not that difficult to learn, but at least you know where you made an error. Okay, so this is going to be parentheses negative 10 cubed, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and handle what's inside the parentheses down here. So we have 100 minus 90 uh, squared. Okay, so 100 minus 90, this is going to be 10 parentheses squared. 
Now, some of you might say, well, you know, should we just finish out this problem? Should I just take this negative 10 and cube it and then just kind of do this math? No, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do uh, any multiplication too uh, quickly when you're dealing with a fraction situation. And I'll explain to you uh, why in a second. So this is the first step that we want to take. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Well, what we're going to do next is have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. This really helps me out. It really helps uh, grow my classroom. Okay, I'm trying to reach people that are interested in mathematics. Maybe you want to relearn math. Maybe you, uh, you know, took math. You know, well, of course, everyone should have taken math, but uh, I get so many people, and I really love to connect with these type of folks that remember taking math way back in the 70s, 80s, 60s, 50s, and they're like, boy, you know, and I always wondered if I could, you know, reach calculus, whatnot. I could tell you right now, 100% of uh, you out there, and if I'm speaking to you directly, you absolutely could have become an engineer, anything you wanted to do, okay? Unfortunately, what happens is, is a lot of people get, uh, they create this kind of uh, math phobia, okay? They become anxious about math or they don't believe they're smart enough. I'm telling you right now, you're absolutely smart enough. But what you need is great instruction, a lot of encouragement, and of course, hard work. I'm trying to reach those type of folks, people that are interested in math and who need help in math uh, by you subscribing. It really does help me uh, grow my channel. By the way, make sure to hit that notification button. And if you are new to my channel, I have 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. I made that content for you. So back to the problem. Okay, so here um, we're at, we have negative 10 cubed over 10 squared. Now, we need to understand what negative 10 cubed means, right? Well, it means take negative 10 and multiply it by itself uh, three times, right? So this is how a power works. Negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. Now, some of you might be inclined to want to, you know, do this actual product, you know, do the multiplication here, but do not do this. Just list out your factors. Okay, now we may do, need to do some multiplication, but, you know, don't make that determination to the very end of a problem. So 10 squared is 10 times 10. So here is the situation. Now, let's kind of observe something so we can kind of uh, get some confusion out of the way. So here I have a negative number, okay, a negative number, and it's being multiplied by another negative number, and this is going to be another negative number, right? Negative times negative times negative. So a negative times a negative is what? Well, hopefully you said positive, okay? A negative times a negative is positive, and a positive times a negative is negative. So what I want you to recognize is that the sign of this value over here is going to be negative. Now, a lot of you can see that you're like, oh, 10 times 10 times 10, that's 100 times 10,000. Uh, Don't really think in those terms just yet. What I want you to do is to concentrate on what the sign of the final answer is going to be. So we have a negative in the numerator, and then, of course, we have a positive, because this is positive times positive is a positive. So a negative divided by a positive is what? Well, that is negative. So our final answer is going to be negative. So that's going to help us because a lot of, uh, you know, you might get confused with all these negative signs, but just know that, hey, we have the same factor, negative divided by uh, positive is going to be negative. So we just need to know, hey, our final answer will be negative. Okay, so now we can just easily finish this problem up because we have all these lovely uh, factors, common factors, okay? So the way it works, let me actually go ahead and just back up here so you can see. So when you have a fraction, okay, and you have the same factor, so this is a product, this times this times this, you know, this is one big multiplication. Um, well, let's just take 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. So these 10s here are factors of 100 because the product of 10 times 10 is 100. So I want to make sure you understand the correct math terminology here. Now, when you have like factors, you can cross cancel these things. Now, some of you might say, well, 10 and negative 10, uh, they're not like. Well, you know what? We can kind of uh, forget about the negatives right now because you know our final answer is going to be negative, right? So what, basically, this negative 10 right here, okay, you might say, well, I can't uh, cross, take this 10 and, and uh, you know, cross cancel with a negative 10 because they're different numbers. Well, here's what I want you to think. This 10 is the same thing as like negative 1 times a positive 10, all right? So we can even break down negative 10 into its lovely little factors. So 
uh, you know, you just kind of, you know, with experience, you'll be able to see this easier, right? So negative 10 is the same thing as negative 1 times 10. So now we could cross cancel these 10s. So 10 will just go on to this negative 10. That will take this out. Of course, that'll be a negative 1 remaining up there. And then I'm left with a negative 10, all right? So negative times negative is positive times a ne negative is negative 10 over uh, these tens are all gone. You're like, well, there's nothing left. Well, there's always a one as a factor. And down here, that'll be a positive one. So negative 10 over positive one gives us negative 10. Okay, so I really wanted to thoroughly explain this problem because if you can do math like this, in other words, if you can just control the process and know what you're doing in every single little tiny step of a basic math problem, this is how you master mathematics. That's what, you know, my whole channel is about getting you to really understand one problem. Okay, I guess it's like that old uh, adage of what, you know, if someone's hungry, I'm gonna mess this up. So uh, please forgive me, but you know, would you rather learn how to fish or would you rather have one fish, right? <laughs> so yeah, I can, you know, what I'm trying to do is teach you how to uh, fish, okay, uh, more or less. If I can really get you to comprehend one problem, okay, like, oh, I understand really everything, what's going on in one problem, well, then you're going to be able to do multiple different problems, right? If I say, hey, I'll show you one, two, three, the steps, blah, 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 here's how you get the answer. You might understand how I got the answer, but you may not under completely comprehend the underlying principles. And this is going to, going to uh, help you out with one problem. But if you understand the principles and all the other things underlying you know, this particular problem, that's going to really help you, you know, do all sorts of different type of problems. And if you truly want to understand mathematics, that's how you want to come at it. You got to be committed. Okay. So I'm not saying it's easy and, you know, to master math. No, it takes effort and, uh, just like anything else. But in terms of, um, you know, uh, you know, do you have to be a genius or rocket science? No. Okay. Uh, you just have to work hard, right. And get great instruction. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.